Hello and welcome to another video about Gridbots. Today I want to talk about a futures Gridbot, how to set one up on Bybit. I mean, most of you guys will have heard of Gridbots before. They can automatically buy low and sell high inside a trading range. But there's a big difference between a spot grid bot and a futures grid bot. Today I'll show you exactly what the difference is, how to set up a futures grid bot on Bybit and how we can use Elliott Wave analysis to define the trading range. But really the focus is on the bot, but I want to show you how to define the range. So we'll do this with Ethereum as an example. Um, I'm going to go to my Ethereum chart. So obviously when you set up a grid bot, you need some kind of a trading range. Yeah, w whether you use Elliott Wave, which is what we do, or you just use a very simple method of determining what is resistance, what is support, doesn't matter so much for the grid bot. But obviously here on this channel, we use a lot of Elliott Wave analysis, but it doesn't really matter which method you use to define your trading range. Um, but basically, before we talk about that, you know, different spot versus future grid bot. A spot grid bot, which I talked about a lot in previous tutorials, it's a simpler version. It's kind of, yeah, it, it's, you could say less risk. Um, it buys the actual coin at lower levels and then sells it, sells it again at higher levels, right? So for example, you have a range defined here and it, it continues to buy when the price goes lower and it will continue to sell as the price goes higher in a range ultimately, uh, you will save a lot of time because trading a range manually takes a lot of time, is often difficult, and a lot of people lose money. But with a spot grid bot, well, there's no leverage, no liquidation risk, no short selling. It's basically an automated range trading tool. A futures grid bot, on the other hand, trades contracts with leverage potentially. It can go long or short, not just buy and sell. So it uses margin, which means liquidation is possible. And the profits and losses are amplified depending on the leverage you select. So in short, a futures grid bot gives you more flexibility, but it comes also with higher risk. Now let's talk about the range first, before we set one up. Ethereum reached its all-time high, and again, I have to show you one range, and it's just, you know, it's not so much about the analysis here, it's about helping you understand how to define a range. Um, you can use ranges that we define in our videos, so make sure you subscribe if you're new on the channel or you just define your own ranges. But here, to explain why I set the range that I set, um, let's talk about the chart briefly. So Ethereum reached its all-time high around $4,950 in August, and since then we've been moving back in a corrective pullback, which I consider from an Elliott Wave point of view a, a wave four. So for those of you who are not so familiar with that, it just means that we expect the price eventually to go higher. So it is a corrective pullback. We're moving in a range. Now, from an Elliott Wave perspective, for this range here, the key support is around $3,370. And the upper boundary of this range would be the all-time high at $4,950. Quite a large range, but that's our range. Um, you might find other charts with smaller ranges. And this is where we will set up the futures grid bot. Now let's go back to Bybit. That gives us our parameters, right? Let's go back to Bybit. So how can we actually get to this trading bot page? Well, you go to tools, you go to trading bot, and then you land here. And then you can say, okay, we compare the bots. You see they have lots of other ones. I mean, let me know in the comments if you also want me to dive into other ones because they have really interesting ones, especially in the, Mart the, the Martingale bot is interesting for... Um, for, um, for, for, for Elliott Wave trading as well. But again, we, today we talk about the Futures Grid bot. Um, select that, go to Futures Grid, and then it takes us here, okay? Now, you can select Neutral, Long, Short. For simplicity, and because Elliott Wave suggests higher prices in this case, um, we will create a Long Grid bot today. And depending on, you know, what you tell me, uh, I will maybe also take a look at the neutral one and the short one, but we want to keep it manageable for now. And I have to, of course, select Ethereum, right? So here you select your pair, trading pair, um, contract essentially it is, because it's futures. And we want to select long, and we want to go to manual. See, they also have an AI strategy. Um, you might want to try that. Um, I prefer to select so to set my ranges manually, yeah, when I use a grid bot. Now, we have the lower range. We defined that 3,370. Now, I would maybe set it a little lower um, just to give it a little bit of room because these are not strict invalidation lines, but you have to have your boundary at some point, right? And to the top, $4,950. So that would be our upper boundary. 
And then we can select the grids, obviously. I mean, next we have to decide, yeah, how many grids to use. So more grids basically mean tighter spacing and more trades. And fewer grids mean wider spacing and fewer trades. For this example, let's select 20. There's no real right answer, right? I mean, you could say more, you have to see what works for you. You know, it depends on how many trades you want the grid bot to do. Um, you also see the option, and a lot of people ask me about arithmetic or geometric. So a lot of people ask me about that, and there's no real answer online, right? So arithmetic means equal spacing between the orders, and geometric means spacing grows or shrinks proportionally. For most beginners, basically, arithmetic is simpler and safer. We can at some point make an advanced grid bot tutorial if you're interested. Now leverage and risk. So Bybit suggests 10x leverage by default. Uh, I would not recommend that. I mean, it depends on your risk profile personally, right? But if you just get into grid bots, make sure you pick a small investment. Yeah, pick a small, um, small size, right? Good news is you can really pick small size here if you want to. I mean, if I go here smaller, then no leverage or low leverage, you see that I have to have a higher investment amount. Um, if I go to 5x, you see it needs to be a little larger. So we could just select five, uh, leverage 5 and I can select uh, something that kind of, hold on, didn't want to do that. And I can just select a, um, let's say, a moderate investment, you could say. But again, what that number is doesn't matter so much. We want to keep it uh, manageable here. We want to keep it realistic for most viewers. Um, but again, you can play around a bit. And also the number of grids will impact what the minimum investment is that you have to put in here into this grad grading bot, yeah? So you can play around a little bit with these parameters. But honestly, I mean, for a futures grid bot, I'd say anything for anything below five. I mean, the higher you go, um, the higher the risk, obviously. You can do that. You know, you can play around with that. Essentially, what is, what is important is... Uh, actually, many people misunderstand that. The leverage itself isn't so important. It, it, the leverage itself does not necessarily increase risk, right? It is the overall investment size, right? It's like you can have a, a tiny investment and a high leverage and ultimately a, a position size based on that, which is manageable for you. Or you can have a small leverage and a large position size or you can have a large position size and high leverage, and that's the high risk then, right? So you have to play around with the investment you put in and the leverage. I mean, that eventually determines your position size, right? So the leverage in itself does not mean high risk. It is the combination of your investment and the leverage. What means high risk for you? Only you can decide, right? Make sure that you know when to get out and have your stop loss in place and everything. So it's all about risk management, right? But again, you enter your investment amount. We've just done that. Again, my, my recommendation would just be start small, see how the bot behaves. If you have no experience, yeah, you might even want to start with a spot grid bot to see how they work, then kind of upgrade to a futures grid bot, but see how it behaves, yeah? And only then increase your position when you're comfortable with it. And once everything here is set, you can just click, uh, click like create now. Yeah. So this is, an, uh, but again, you have to, or you can um, have your advanced settings because what you ultimately want to do, you want to set your stop loss as well, right? Um, it needs to be obviously below the lower boundary. So you have to say, okay, I want that grid bot obviously to stop if it breaks below my range, right? Or there's a high risk that the whole thing fails. So you want to set it somewhere. Yeah, Obviously below the boundary would be needed. You could also shrink your um, price range, okay? But obviously the market de decides and determines our range. Now I showed you the daily, the daily time frame. Um, in crypto, obviously volatility is high. So if you set the trading range too small, you might get kicked out very, very quickly. What you could try, for example, is a larger range with a smaller position size, give it more room to move. But again, that depends on the actual chart you're trading. Some are more volatile than others. But yeah, I would recommend you set the stop loss. Would need to be around 3,340. You could also select the take profit. 
and uh, your entry price if you want to have the advanced settings you can select a trading stop even yeah so you can hover here what it means so it monitors the account's net value in real time and calculates the exit line based on a drawdown set by the user so if there's a 20 percent drawdown the net values correspond to exit lines and then you can read through that but basically it moves the stop loss with the price um, it's a way of managing risk so click create now and then here you can see all your settings you can double check that click confirm and it's created and then you have your grid bot created and this is actually the one that we set, set uh, recently that's the spot grid bot made a small loss yeah this is one that we um, had in the previous uh, tutorial it is expected that it made a small loss uh, but it would have been uh, a higher loss you know had you just bought and held uh, since the last update ethereum declined quite strongly so this is good for the grid bot you could say because the grid bot in a decline it kind of reduces the loss it won't make profit in a decline how could it but it will you know in any small rally sell at profit and then when the price goes down it will buy again so you want essentially for the grid bot to work also the price to go down now our future grid bot here is already grinding um again you know uh, it's, it's kind of the same trading range but obviously with the uh, futures grid bot we have now entered at the lower price in pretty much the same range roughly right um now it's important to say that um this one here that we set was just for tutorial purposes right so it's actually out of the range now so it needs to be closed uh, or the range needs to be managed but again i'm not going to do that here um but you see it's moving and the leverage is obviously creating here um let's say rapid movement it's a fairly small position size but i wanted to show you uh, overall the mechanics of it and how it actually works so yeah i mean overall a future grid bot makes sense if you have a well-defined range in our case based on elliott wave support and resistance but it's not magic it's not a magic money machine if ethereum breaks below 3370 you know the elliott wave structure is invalidated and i would personally shut down the bot um so treat the tool with respect yeah it can be useful, but it can also be dangerous. Um, you need to get used to it, and um, you might want to start with the with the with the spot grid bot. But yeah, basically that is how it works. And if some people ask me, you know, why why would you choose a grading bot, a trading bot, and not trade it manually? Honestly, I mean, for many people, you don't want to spend hours in front of the screen just trading a range. Yeah, it's it's. I have to say, in in a um, in a trend, in a strong uptrend, for example, you don't want to use a grid bot, right? You, will, you can trade that easier by hand. But if you are in a range, most people will lose money. And those who don't um, w will struggle to make profit. And if you struggle to make profit or even make little profit, because in a range you don't typically make massive profit, you better, you know, you, that, that time is often better spent elsewhere, right? Either you're focusing on setups that really promise a trend, or you're trading a trend or just do other stuff you know do your work or hobby or something but just trading a range can also be mentally draining so my personal view is that in a trading range the grid bot can perform better um or you have to spend a lot of mental energy trading the range and you could actually do some other stuff probably more productively yeah um so yeah that is how we how we view it uh, i hope that is helpful um, MCO has partnered with Bybit, so um, it is uh, one of the world's largest crypto exchanges, Bybit. If you'd like to try this strategy yourself or a future grid bot, you'll find our official Bybit partner link in the video description. By using it, you support this channel and future tutorials, and you'll also receive a 20%, no, sorry, 10% discount on your trading fees for the first 30 days. Remember, trade responsibly, and let me know in the comments whether you want to see more tutorials like that. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.